All right, everybody. Now let's switch gears to turbines. I love turbines, so I'm gonna start by that. We use this a lot. I gave the example of hydroelectric power plant, right? So what happens is 75% of rivers in North America is no longer flowing freely. We put dams on it and we use turbine and uh, generator couple in order to get energy out of it and power the electric uh, needs that we have, okay? But at the end of the day, a turbine is a mechanical device and it extracts energy from a fluid, okay? And what happens is it changes its uh, pressure and or velocity. The, the more important thing is the pressure, not the velocity, but you know, the velocity changes too. So I wanna just generally, uh, you know, there's different ways to draw it, but let's say that this is the, you know, inlet of my um, turbine, and this is the exit of my turbine, and what, have will, what will happen is I'm gonna get some power out of it, okay? So I don't wanna make a generalization in terms of this happens to the uh, pressure, this happens to the uh, velocity, because it really depends uh, in general, not always, if this is a gas, the pressure drops, um, okay? So that is actually very common. So the pressure drops over here and the velocity increases, okay? And that's what the, the high pressure that I have inside of it will enable me to extract energy, okay? This, if this is a liquid, I have liquid turbines too, what will happen is that the pressure is pretty much gonna remain constant and I will decrease the velocity along the way. That's how I will be able to extract the energy from a liquid, an incompressible or rather barely compressible um, liquid, okay? So they, we use this a lot and as I said, what I do is the ex output of this is connected to, uh, so the, the workout is, is in the form of a shaft work typically and I connect this to a generator and the generator I have, you know, like plus minus and I can connect this to outside world and be connected to electrical energy which is the highest quality of energy that, that we can have. So that's a pretty good system. We use this a lot. It is very a helpful device, okay? And there's not a lot to talk about it um, in the other than what I just said, okay? It is a component of it. We're gonna have cycles uh, down the road, you will see. And in the cycles, you will, you will, this will be a part of it, okay? Turbine is where we extract energy. So the extract energy, that's the whole point about it, okay? So then why don't I do an example to illustrate, uh, you know, how to analyze a turbine. I don't want to write, you know, obviously this one, you know, m.1 is equal to m.2 and let the exit will be the same because it's steady, right? It goes here outside. And I don't want to write energy uh, conservation. The reason is it really depends. Some people say it's supposed to be adiabatic, but I really kind of don't agree too much because, um, you know, you can ignore it, but there will be some kind of a heat loss because you have a high temperature and high pressure gas in most general sense coming in. So you will not, you know, there may be some uh, heat loss. And the example I'm going to do now will have the heat loss incorporated to it, okay? So why don't I write the example instead of uh, make you watch me writing several sentences. I'll write back, okay? Okay, I'm back. So you can see what, what the question is. It says that it's a steam, which is kind of, uh, you know, we use a lot, flows through a non-adiabatic. Aha, uh -huh, I told you. You cannot always say that Q is equal to zero. So we, we cannot say this for this particular case because of this word, none. A diabetic turbine with a mass flow rate. So I have my m dot at the inlet uh, will be 10 pound mass per second. Okay, the steam at the inlet is so if I look at the uh, inlet, uh, it is 500 psia in terms of the pressure, and I have temperature is 800 Fahrenheit, fairly high, right? While steam at the exit is I gave I was given that the pressure will go down, right? That must happen in order for me to extract energy out of it. And as a side of it, of it, typically the temperature significantly goes down as well. So you can see the ranges that I'm working with. It's fairly high pressure, right? 500 psia. It goes to pretty much 15 psia, not a, you know a barely above the atmospheric 14.7. So it is telling me that there's a heat loss. The question is telling me that there's a heat loss, and this heat loss is 360,000. Wow. BTU per hour. And it's asking me, what is the power output of this particular turbine? How much energy can I extract from this fluid, the steam that I have over here, okay? Um, I think you have uh, already know the approach that I take for every single kind of case. I go to table A5, in this particular case E, at the back of the Chang'el uh, Appendix 2, and I look at 500 PSIA, and I find my uh, saturated temperature corresponding to this particular saturated pressures 467.04 Fahrenheit. 
and the information given to me is 800 Fahrenheit, no question about it, is definitely superheated vapor, okay? And then I go to the superheated vapor table, A6E, I read 500 PSIA, comma, 800 Fahrenheit listed there, and I get myself H1 will be equal to 14, 12.5 BTU per pound mass. So far so good, okay? But I, the good news is I also have, this is for one, I also have for um, uh, state two, or rather the exit component of it given to me. So I, now I go to again table A5E. This time I look at 15 PSII, which is barely about atmospheric pressure. And I got my saturated temperature to be 212.99 Fahrenheit, okay? And my temperature is given as 240. Definitely I will be in the superheated, but not as uh, into the superheated region as in the inlet, which makes sense. That's how I can extract the energy, right? The energy content of the exit needs to be lower, so I can, the difference will be what will let me extract the energy, okay? I do the same thing, A6E, this time on I do PSI, comma, 245 per night, and I was lucky but the information was there. So I get my H2 is 1163.9 BTU per pound mass. Okay, then I'm gonna write m.1 is equal to m.2 or rather in that exit and it will be m. dot. So then I'll go back and write the q. dot. let's call this net, w. dot net will be equal to m. dot times h e v e squared by 2 g z e minus h i plus v inlet by 2 g z i. As I mentioned before, the potential energy difference will will not be there. I wasn't even given the velocity, but typically that doesn't really matter in terms of how much uh, h I have. And I gave that example in the like two, three segments back. I said that, you see this is 1163 and the, the, the velocity will be so low compared to this. This is huge, okay, B2. I'm not sure you realize that, okay? So that's not gonna be there. Let's look at Q net. Um, and if you remember, this will be Q dot in because that increases the energy minus Q dot out. So this is out, and this is given to me as 360,000 BTU per hour. Okay, fine. This is going to be W dot out minus W dot in. Because we, we have a negative in front of it, I start with the W out. There's no work in. The work out is what I'm actually after. Okay, so if I write that, now I'm going to get minus Q dot out minus W dot out will be equal to M dot h exit minus h inlet and that is common right one inlet one out so let's look at this q out so um, i'm going to highlight something over here so you're looking at the uh, m dot value this m dot value given to me as 10 pound mass per second so we have to do some kind of a conversion because this is in hours this is in seconds so i'm gonna do convert everything to seconds okay so that i'm consistent all right so then from here, Q that out, you're gonna divide this 360,000 divided by, uh, in one hour, there's 3,600 seconds. You know this, right? Um, so this is BTU per hour, you know, this is seconds per hour, right? So you can see from here, I get myself this to be BTU per second. So every, uh, you know, second is 100 BTU lost due to the heat, okay? So let's edit there, minus 100, minus W dot out, will be equal to M dot 10, and H exit 1163.9 minus 1412.5. And this is BTU per pound mass. Remember, this was pound mass per um, second. So pound mass is canceled. I get BTU per second. So good, I'm consistent with respect to what I'm doing, okay? Um, so you can see over here, if you just uh, you know, use a calculator for this, you're gonna get this to be 2386 BTU per second. So every second I'm generating 2386 BTUs, okay? And in case uh, for international, uh, you know, units, SI units, I just wanna give you an idea, you know? Um, so uh, if I am not uh, mistaken, I may be slightly off, I don't think a lot, but something like that was the conversion between BTU and kilojoule. Uh, that sounds about right, but you know, double check that. And if I do the conversion, you can see I multiply this one point. So let's say on average it's going to be 2.5 uh, to, to, to mega joules per second, right? That's what I'm going to get over here. So this is 2.5 megawatts. So this is how much, uh, you know, just want to highlight 2.5 megawatts is what is 
I can extract from this system. Okay, that's kind of high. I mean, that's good, right? That's how much energy I can generate from a turbine. Okay, I think that's gonna do it for me for the turbine component. Uh, I'll be back with the compressor and pumps. Take care.